Usually with most simple antennas, you either get an omnidirectional or bidirectional coverage. For instance, a simple vertical antenna like a ground plane will be omnidirectional and a dipole, if it's sufficiently high above the ground, will be roughly bidirectional. When it's lower down, it tends to be more omnidirectional. However, there is a case where you can use a single wire and get one direction, or more precisely, a deep null in one direction. That's what I'm going to test today. It was made possible because of a comment by Stefan HB9EAJ at the end of one of my previous videos. There, Stefan mentioned that if you have a one wavelength piece of wire, about 20 meters long on 14 megahertz, then you can set it up in a certain configuration, a bit like an inverted L, but not quite at 90 degrees, and be able to get a deep null in the direction that the antenna wire is pointing. I tried it with antenna modeling software, and sure enough, that's what I got. Next stage is to go outside to the park at the end of my street and put one up to see if actual results correlate with what the computer says. The first test I did was late in the afternoon when Europeans are coming in long path. I set up the receiver near the camera and walked around 360 degrees to see if I could discern a null. Watch next and you be the judge. I've got the bottom end of the six meter length about 50 or 60 centimeters above the ground. Luckily, not much wind, so this should hold up. For the counterpoise, I'll just use this ground mat that I've described in earlier videos. Here's a quick drawing. The transmitter is at this side via the L-match antenna coupler, six meters up the squid pole, 14 meters across but sloping down, and around two meters up. And the null is in this direction.
driving an old amplifier SP220 from Heath uh, with a pair of 3-500Zs and close to 800 watt output. And uh, the antenna is homemade, uh, a three-element uh, typical quad up at uh, 30 meter height at 100 feet, Sanyo. I really like it. So uh, I 
combat made a very good radio, isn't it? So that was a contact between a DK station in Europe and a JA. And I did seem to detect a null on both those transmissions when I had the long wire pointing towards them. The next thing I did was to try some whisper. I tried three different directions, one aiming to null towards Europe, long path, the second aiming to null towards Japan, short path, and another nulling towards the west. I then compared signal reports from receiving stations via WhisperNet to see if changing the direction of the wire made much of a difference, particularly with the null. Here are the results. I think they're fairly clear, showing that there is indeed a null in the direction that the wire is pointing. Just having a look at the results via WISPA. Looked at the website and then I put them down in call signs as well as signal to noise ratios at various tests with the antenna in different directions. Without going through the numbers in detail, there's a very pronounced effect, notably in the case of Japan, quite big differences in signals, where I had the null north, then the signals drop quite a bit. New Zealand, the numbers were too volatile to come up with a conclusion. Some local VKs in about similar direction, uh, VK4 and VK3. The VK3 was, I think, only about 50 kilometres away. The VK4 would be maybe 1,500. Anyway, they're roughly 30 degrees and there were some consistencies between those two in that the last antenna, or the last direction, was better than the first two. Most significant, and this is what I was really trying to find out, was how it went with Europe. And with the wire pointing towards Europe, so it was in the null, in some cases the signal still got through to Europe but at a much reduced signal strength. In other cases, in fact in most other cases, the signal was not detected at all and I was running 5 watts whisper whereas I went to either of the other directions and the signal was decoded with that. So it's quite clear that it doesn't matter the way the antenna is pointed except where there's the null pointing in a certain direction then that's obviously very deep and it quite severely attenuates signals from that one direction. So in summary, uh, very big differences for Japan and Europe, which is where I deliberately positioned the nulls to. In retrospect, I should have looked at um, American stations more and tried to align a null for them. I didn't, and as a result, the American reports are quite similar between the different antennas. Um, there might be a bit of a pattern, but not so much, because I didn't have the null centred on the US in any of the three positions that I tried. 
when I had the null in uh, the western direction, I was hoping that there were some VK6s, but no, no VK6s were on the band in any direction when I tried. Um, it's a similar distance from here to ZL, so you'd expect that VK6s would detect me, um, but unfortunately none. How might this be useful? There may be a case where you're trying to hear stations from some directions, but there are strong stations from other directions that you don't want to hear. For instance, if you were an American living somewhere in the middle of the US and you wanted to go for you worked all states, then you might be interested in working people to the west and to the east, but not necessarily to the south. If you aimed the antenna so that the long wire was pointing towards South America, then you'd be able to null out South American stations. That could be handy on a band like 7 MHz, where you can have cases where signals from further away can be stronger than those nearer that you wish to work. Of course, the antenna that I described was for 14 MHz, so make sure you scale all the dimensions up and down accordingly for the band that you're going to use.